Hey everybody, I'm C. Andrew Nelson, founder of Aquatacy, and it's time again for the Aquatacy Countdown. Nine fish species mistakenly sold as tropical. These are nine fish species often marketed as tropical, which do much better at cooler subtropical temperatures. For the purposes of this list, I've eliminated some obvious cold water species such as goldfish. I'm focusing instead on fish that you may have been told or innocently assumed were tropical species. And when we're done counting them down, please take a moment to subscribe to the Aquatacy channel and click that bell notification icon so you don't miss any of our new videos. Here we go. Number nine, gold dojos. I think it's no exaggeration to say that the gold dojo is just about the most amusing and entertaining fish available to the aquarium hobby. With its droopy face, wiggly worm locomotion, and constant activity, the gold dojo will keep you enthralled for hours on end. They are a member of the loach family and are excellent scavengers, always poking around for morsels of food that have fallen to the bottom of the tank. And although they do get a bit large, over eight inches long, they are extremely peaceful, posing no threat except to only the smallest of fish. Gold dojos would seem like a perfect addition to a larger tropical community aquarium and are often sold as such. In reality, the gold dojo is a cold water species that needs to be kept at a temperature between 64 and 74 degrees Fahrenheit to maintain good health. They make good companions for goldfish, especially comets and shibunkins. But gold dojos with their high level of activity can sometimes annoy the more sedate fantail varieties. A fun fish, just not tropical. Number eight, Odessa barbs. The Odessa barb has been a popular fish in this hobby since the 1970s, and for good reasons. As one of the more peaceful barbs available to aquarists, the Odessa barb is a terrific candidate for a community aquarium. They stay comparatively small, under two inches, aren't fussy about what they eat, and their coloration and markings are pleasing to the eye. While it's common to see them sold alongside tropical barb species, Odessa barbs can actually be quite happy in the temperature range of 61 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit, especially in the lower portion of that range. Since they originate from clear waters with little to no vegetation, plants are optional, but can be included in their tank for purely aesthetic purposes. A well-planted tank and a dark substrate will help their colors to really pop. As with other barb species, it's important to provide them with adequate swimming space. Odessa barbs are schooling fish and should be maintained in groups of eight or more consisting of both males and females so that they feel safe and secure. Good tank mates that can thrive under cooler temps include the Burmese loach and the ubiquitous zebra daniel. Odessa barbs are a great species to build a community tank around. Number seven, bloodfin tetras. A very underrated species, the bloodfin tetra is almost the perfect tetra. Not too big, not too small, hardy and healthy, will eat any type of food you give it, easy to breed, can handle a wide range of pH and water hardness, is active and engaging, has a long lifespan for a tetra, five to seven years, and as long as it's kept in a group of six or more, it is a peaceful fish that will fit into a variety of community aquarium settings. So why is it so undervalued by hobbyists and fish dealers? Probably because it gets overlooked in favor of the similarly shaped and colored and more strikingly attractive rummy nose tetra. Both species make fantastic additions to a general community aquarium, and in the area of appearances, rummies do score higher points. Rummy nose tetras have far more interesting markings and school together in tight formation, which is quite eye-catching. However, the bloodfin tetra has several advantages over the rummy nose. Bloodfins are more robust and resilient than their rummy nose cousins. With a longer life expectancy, they will outlive the rummies. They are bolder, braver, and not as easily spooked. And best of all, they can live at both tropical and subtropical temperatures. Bloodfin tetras have a surprisingly vast temperature range of 65 to 83 degrees Fahrenheit. As a shoaling species rather than a schooling species, bloodfins exhibit a very different behavior from rummies, making them quite fascinating to watch, especially if you're accustomed to owning schooling tetras. You see now why bloodfin tetras should be shown a little more love? Number six, Bengal danios. It's near to impossible not to notice a school of Bengal danios. Topping out at three and a half inches in length, the Bengal danio is an impressive fish. If you like danios and you're looking for a bigger challenge than zebras, pearls, or glow bites, 
then I highly recommend you consider keeping a school of Bengals. There are a few caveats though regarding this species. Because they do best in groups of eight or more, and because they're a bit on the larger side, you will need an appropriately large tank to house them with a scape that has ample room for the Bengals to swim. And swim they will. Bengal Danios never seem to hold still, constantly on the go like they're late for a meeting. This sort of behavior could unnerve other fish that have a more laid-back disposition, so keep that in mind when selecting tank mates. Another thing to keep in mind, or they wouldn't be on this list, is that Bengal Danios lean more towards cooler temperatures than tropical temps. Their range goes from 59 degrees to 79 degrees Fahrenheit, which makes them a good choice for outdoor container ponds, especially during warmer months, or indoor unheated aquariums. Just be certain to keep them in larger numbers as it tends to curb any bad behavior. Bengal Danios will stay busy schooling and chasing each other, and thereby leaving the rest of your fish alone. Number 5. Texas Cichlids Many of us assume that cichlids all come from tropical environments, but that is not the case. Say howdy to the Texas cichlid, a big handsome beast of a fish. Would you expect anything less from Texas? The Texas cichlid is a right fine looking fish that has a golden coloration with turquoise and white spots all over. Out in the wild frontier, this fish can be found blazing a trail along the Rio Grande drainage from Texas down through the northeastern part of Mexico. These tough hombres can get up to a foot in length and have a personality as big as the state they're named after. Speaking of big, you better have a big corral, I mean aquarium, if you want to keep one of these critters. Nothing smaller than a 75 gallon tank will do for a mature specimen. And when you set up that big tank, you better hold your horses when it comes to heating up that water. Because even though the Texas cichlid is one bad hoss, this fish does not like it hot. Yes, it can tolerate temperatures as high as 91 degrees Fahrenheit for a short period of time, but they will feel much more at home on the range of 68 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. See what I did there? You keep your Texas cichlids water a mite bit on the cool side, and I reckon they'll be much obliged. Number 4. Paradise Fish If you're looking for a beautiful and colorful labyrinth species, the paradise fish is a marvelous choice. This species has been in the hobby of fish keeping since 1869. Native to China, Taiwan, Japan, South Korea, Laos, Malaysia, Vietnam, and Russia, paradise fish are relatively peaceful fish that can do well in a general community setting and are an interesting alternative to keeping betta splendens. There are many similarities between paradise fish and bettas. Both species are bubble nesters, both have territorial males, and both are fairly easy to care for. But whereas the betta is a decidedly tropical species, the paradise fish does better in an aquarium that is unheated during the winter season in order to mimic their natural environment. And that natural environment is a chilly 50 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit. For those wishing to keep paradise fish, they appreciate a well-planted tank that provides them with areas of shade. If you do this for them, they will reward you with their natural, intriguing behavior. Number 3. Rosy Barbs One of my absolute favorite barbs, and in fact one of my favorite aquarium fish in general, is the beautiful Rosy Barb. Originating from India, Pakistan, Nepal, and Bangladesh, the Rosy Barb is one of the best beginner fish available. Not only is it a gorgeous species, it's a fish that you almost can't go wrong with. Rosy barbs are renowned for their hardiness, their ease of care, their tolerance of a wide range of water chemistry, and their peaceful nature. Plus, a school of rosy barbs looks amazing in your aquarium. I said almost can't go wrong because there is one aspect to keeping rosy barbs where hobbyists sometimes fail, and that, as you can guess, is water temperature. Rosy barbs get lumped into the tropical category by big pet shops, local fish stores, than even some seasoned aquarists. That's too bad because these aquatic jewels favor temperatures in the area of 61 to 76 degrees Fahrenheit. If you keep them in a good sized school, you can combine rosy barbs with all sorts of tetras, catfish, loaches, cyprinids, and live bearers without any problems, as long as those other species can handle the slightly cooler water. Number two, Buenos Aires tetras. You would think that with a name like Buenos Aires Tetra that it would be a fish from warm waters. I've personally been to Buenos Aires, Argentina, and it was warm. No, scratch that, it was hot. 
Be that as it may, the Buenos Aires Tetra doesn't like it hot. With a big temperature range of 61 to 83 degrees Fahrenheit, this fish can dwell in a warmer aquarium with tropical species. Nevertheless, if it could be given a choice, the Buenos Aires Tetra would probably seek out the lower end of that range. Many hobbyists keep this species at tropical temps with it seemingly healthy and happy. There's a trade-off, though, because at the higher temperatures, the fish's metabolism is accelerated, which can shorten its lifespan. In other words, higher temps can burn them out, and that can be said of many of the fish on this list. Keeping Buenos Aires Tetras is a fun challenge. This is a very gregarious schooling species, and they absolutely must be kept in groups of eight or more, otherwise they'll turn into real fin nippers. Don't keep them with slow-moving or long fin species, which the Buenos Aires Tetra may find too tempting. They do best on a diet of live and frozen foods like Daphnia and bloodworms, coupled with some plant matter. High maintenance? Maybe. But one look at their attractive markings and coloration will reassure you that the Buenos Aires Tetra is worth the extra effort. And number one, White Cloud Mountain Minnows. Out of all the fish on this list, this is the species I feel the most sorry for. Because White Cloud Mountain Minnows are almost always sold as tropical fish, which they simply are not. Sadly, they seldom get the respect they deserve, and are all too often thrown into tropical tanks and left to tough it out in water that is too warm for them. The White Cloud Mountain Minnow is named after, you guessed it, White Cloud Mountain in Guangdong, China, where they were first discovered. And since its native habitat is a mountain stream, I'm sure you can figure out that the water up in the mountains isn't particularly warm. White Cloud Mountain Minnows are best off in a temperature range of 58 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit, which even at the high end of that range is not what could be considered tropical. But don't let that stop you from getting a school of these adorable little fish. I truly believe that every freshwater fish hobbyist should keep white clouds at some time during their lives. This is a charming little species and hands down the most peaceful aquarium fish I know of. They make neon tetras look like vicious killers. White clouds are peaceful, active, visually appealing, and completely undemanding. They are perfect for outdoor tubbing, indoor community aquariums, or a single species tank. They would make outstanding tank mates for all but one of the other species on this list. I'm looking at you, Texas cichlid. Inexpensive, readily available, easily bred, and loads of fun, the White Cloud Mountain Minnow is a fish everybody should try keeping at least once. Just do it in cool water. So, what are your experiences with these species? If you believe I'm wrong, then please leave a comment below and straighten me out. This is just one man's opinion. Or if I'm right, tell me why you agree with me. And if there's a species you think should be on this list and isn't, then let everyone know by leaving a comment about it. One lucky person who leaves a comment will be chosen at random to receive an official Aquatacy sticker absolutely free. The winner will be announced in the next Aquatacy countdown. And congratulations to Friday Fish Facts for being the winner from the previous Aquatacy Countdown. Be sure to go check out their channel. If you like this video, then please like this video, subscribe, and until next time, blessings to you.